I did an interview with Eric Reese a couple of weeks ago where we talked about this because he just had a massively successful Kickstarter campaign. I was kind of asking, I go, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of non-lean startup stuff about Kickstarter campaigns these days. People spend a ton of money doing PR and marketing around an, a Kickstarter campaign when you don't know if that's going to be successful. It's kind of anti-lean. Um, and Eric says, and, you know, that actually, and I know that this is actually true. People launch multiple Kickstarter campaigns now. They'll do one that, and test it out and learn from that before they go and try to do the big one. So it's still understanding your market and how do you, uh, how do you find out whether who are the right publications you should go to or who's your mar right market segment that you're reaching out to. It just so happens that you know, Eric Reese isn't a startup. He has a huge following. So that's why his campaign, I think, was so successful. But the other thing that gets people in trouble with Kickstarter campaigns is that they're too successful, like if they're manufacturing something. And suddenly they have 100,000 customers. They maybe have a couple million dollars in the bank, but they have no, it's like one person and a co-founder, and they have no infrastructure to deal with their customer support. They have no idea how to manage you know, a million people that have just signed up for their product. They have no idea how to do manufacturing at scale or how to do international distribution, which is extraordinarily difficult. So Eric's comment really was is that people raise too much money on Kickstarter now because people are trying to raise as much money as they can. And really, you should be raising it, you know, enough to prove that it's viable. And actually, a lot of venture capitalists now will look at that as proof and fund companies that are successful at it. So if you do that, maybe you shouldn't go after, you know, if it's a piece of hardware especially, maybe you shouldn't go after millions of dollars. You should go after a smaller amount of money that gets you to your next milestone. I would only go on there after I've proved that my product is viable. I don't want to go on too early, right? So we call it, this is like the premature scaling thing. It's like the tech crunch bump, yeah. right? You can get on tech crunch. It's actually not that hard. They're, they're looking for stories. And they can send you tens of thousands of visitors and you're measuring the vanity metric of how many visitors you're getting. And then after it sort of goes away, you're left with, well, what do I got? And you can only do that many, so many times before you fail. There's actually a, uh, it's kind of a funny story, is I was doing, judging a pitch competition in New York City. And there was this guy that was building a uh, match.com for pets. Okay? So, yeah, <laughs> great idea, right? It's disruptive innovation. Um, and, uh, you know, U.S. media doesn't really like real stories. They like fluffy stories. So this was a great story. So he got on all of the morning shows. Match.com for pets. They love stories like that, right? So tens of thousands of views, right? And so this was all in his pitch. Here's all the TV shows I've been on. We're getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of hits on our website. And so I, I, I was mean. I burst his bubble. I said, how many, um, so how many users do you have? Oh, yeah. 10,000 hits. No, no. How many people? Oh, well, we've had, a, you know, a thousand people sign up for the account. How many engaged users do you have? Oh, we have a, about, a, you know, a hundred people that are like logging on every week. How many dates have happened? How many people, how many matches have happened? Two. <laughs> <I'm> like, 